It's cold and windy outside, very cold, very windy. So what better time to look at building the wonderful core flute nitro powered biplane that you've all seen fly on my channel before I promised you a build video. Well, this is it. And I've got my materials sitting here in front of me. In fact, I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to build this plane and how to build it. So sit down, drop a chair, make yourself a coffee and watch. Now let's take a look at the basic materials and tools we're going to be needing to build this model. And first of all, we have our hot glue gun, our hot glue gun. And you need to get a really good one of these because the glue joints are critical. If they break, your plane will fall out of the sky and going with that hot glue gun, you will need a glue stick like this. I use about three quarters of the glue stick in my plane. Um, also, you're going to need some scissors to cut the core flute. You could use a knife like I've got here, but I find scissors are just so much easier and more practical, especially when you're cutting across the flutes at an angle because the, 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 the scissors don't wander, the knife will. You're also going to need a Sharpie because you need to mark out the pattern on the core flute and this Sharpie is the best way I've found to do it. You're going to need something like a tape measure. Here's a tape measure and I use a tape measure for the longer measures wait for this plane to go past, for the longer measures, but for shorter measures, I have a steel rule like this one, which goes up to 300 millimeters or one foot. Now, you're also going to need a pair of pliers like these. Uh, this is because you'll be using some wire like this for the linkages. Finally, you're going to need some scraps of plywood. You'll have to have some thick plywood like this for the firewall motor mount and thinner plywood for the control horns. And that's about it. Of course, you will also be needing the core flute that I have here on my table and I recommend you get two different colours. Um, I use red and white because I think it looks really good. So you can get yourself some red core flute and some white core flute or the colours of your choice. It's entirely up to you. Um, but it does provide a nice contrast and with the little biplane, which I'll reach down here and pick up, I think you'll agree that red and white doesn't look too bad at all. It's rather smart, doesn't it? So that's just my choice of colours. You can choose what you like. Remember the core flute is 3.2 millimetres or 1 8th of an inch thick. You don't want the thick stuff, it's too heavy. You just want this 1 8 inch, um, 3.2 millimeter stuff. So let's get started building this rather pretty little biplane. Okay, let's lay out these wings. They are 20 inches in span and four inches in cord. So get your tape measure because your ruler might be too short and mark out a 20 inch length on the core flute. Now, put a mark there. This is, I'm using the white core flute for my wings. So that's why I'm using this sheet. Now, the best way to do it is to cut uh, both wings out of the sheet at once and then cut them in half. So we're going to have eight inches by 24 to get that rectangle of core flute that will make up our wings. Let's mark out the eight inch mark, which is up here. A square is probably not a bad idea when you're doing this too, because it'll enable you to get things beautifully square. In fact, I've grabbed a long steel rule, longer than my normal rule, so that I can make sure I've got this all marked out perfectly. One good thing about core flute is, if you sight along the flutes, you can actually get nice straight parallel lines without even having to measure. So I've got that marked, and in fact, I can put that on there and draw my line through here like this. And there is the rectangle from which my wings will be cut. I've also marked it at the four inch mark because we'll be cutting it in half, getting two wings, which are 20 inches long, four inches wide. Now just mark the other length here to get the four inch measurement right. And here it is. There we go, there's our wing. Now you notice this isn't actually completely square, this piece of uh, core foot, so I've had to actually mark the end there. Now I will cut this from the large sheet. When cutting across the flutes, I find scissors are just so much more effective than a knife. Very quick and easy. I'll just cut this here across the flutes where I've marked it. Look at this, just cuts like butter. So again, you don't have to actually be deadly accurate with this model because near enough is close enough. One of the good things about designing and building your own models is that sometimes the mistakes make the model even better. So there we are, I've cut that. I'm actually going to use my knife to cut along these sections here because it does give a slightly better cut when you're going with the flutes. You can cut between two flutes and I'll show you how that's done. Right, I'm going to cut along this line. 
So I'll be extracting my large piece of core flute from the rest of it. You'll find cutting along the flutes is actually quite easy. The knife will run nicely between the flutes if you just take a little time. Make sure you get it all lined up perfectly. Which I'm not doing. I've made a bit of a mistake. Never mind. Never mind. Rough enough is near enough with this kind of construction. Let's have another go here. That's beautiful. Just back it up a bit to there. That's right. Once you've done that, you can actually then bend the core flute backwards like this. See? So it bends. I've cut a long set of flutes here, bent it backwards, and now I can just run my knife along the back to finish that cut. Except where I started on the edge, I didn't quite start that in the right place. There we go. There is our wing piece. The two wings, I've marked it down the centre where we're going to cut it. It's a bit bodgy up here. Don't worry about it. It's not going to make any difference. So now I have to trim up the end here, which wasn't quite square, which is what I'll do here. And you notice my camera is really, really crap. And I've tried to get a new camera. I'm hoping someone would sponsor me by donating a lovely camera that I can use for these videos in return for a free plug on my videos. But nobody wants to do it, so you'll just have to put up with the terrible quality that this camera is actually producing right now. The two wings still joined down the middle. Let's cut through the middle. Um, shall I use my scissors this time? I'll give it a go. We'll see what it looks like when I use my scissors. Here we go. It just takes a little bit of fiddling to get this right. You can, just, you can use the flutes as a guide when you're cutting. See, as I say, scissors are actually a bit easier sometimes. Though the end result, if you're a fussy person, is not quite as good. Here we go. In fact, I lie, that was pretty damn good. Better than the one I did on that side. There are our two wings, but obviously like this, they look pretty damn boring square wings. Who wants a square wing? Not me, thank you very much. So, now we have to mark out one of the tips. So you get your best free hand going and just mark out what you think is a nice looking tip. Something like this will do. This is how I like my tips to look. Yours may look a little different. I like a bit of round, a bit of curve in a biplane because biplanes tend to be somewhat older and curves were all the fashion a while back. So then we can just cut this with our scissors. And I notice I've left, I haven't gone right to the edge here, I've left a little, a little bit on the edge and I'll show you why I've done that once we've cut it out. These scissors are not actually very sharp, but they'll do. Hope your scissors at home are sharper than mine. We go, there's our nice curved end. But we want everything looking pretty much the same. So we've done this end, we need to do the other end. And we'd really want it to have it as close as possible to the same. To get this end matching that end, we take our off cut, the piece we cut off the end, and we simply position it over the end of the wingtip and we mark it. And because we're using this as a template, it should be identical to the other side. It may be a little distorted. You've got to try and keep it straight because I actually should have left a bit more edge so that it gave me a stiffer template. But this will do. You have to fiddle around a bit, try and get your fingers in the right place. And if you do it right, you'll end up with a perfect duplicate of the other wingtip. My finger got in the way there. Now this isn't very perfect, but it's near enough. And we'll now cut that out with the scissors, giving us the perfect wing. Or so we hope. Really should have sharpened these scissors before I started, but never mind. All right. There is the wing. It's got two tips that are pretty much the same. One wing done. Now we'll do the other. To do the other, it's a piece of cake. We just lay one wingtip on top of the first wingtip, take our sharpie, mark around that wingtip shape, and on the other side, mark around the wingtip shape. Voila! We've marked this out, cut it to shape. Two wings for our biplane. Have you ever made wings any quicker than that? That is the fastest pair of wings you will ever make. They're ready to go. Now we can make the tailplane. The tailplane is just another rectangle of core flute. This time it is three inches by nine inches. Remembering that the, the flutes must run from side to side, from the tip to tip of the tailplane, just like they did with the wing. So now 
on my little piece of board here, I will mark out that size of rectangle. So we want nine inches in span using my lovely metal ruler, which is quite hard to see in this light actually. I should have used something a bit easier. Nine inches in span, three inches in cord as it's called, which is from front to back. Now I can use the flutes as a guide to draw the line. It's just rather nice. It saves a lot of work. That line there. And I'll use my square to draw this line here. Piece of cake. See, no plans are required for this model because it's all just simple measurement. There is my uh, tail plane. Of course, it looks a bit boring, a square tail plane, doesn't it? So you can do what I did on mine. I simply measured in an inch from each edge, like this, and an inch from that edge over there, like this. Do it this way so you can see while I'm doing the measuring. So an inch in from each side. Then I measured an inch back from the rear, like this. And sight that flute as well, all the way down there to there. I'll mark another thing. Then I just join these lines up, like so, and like so. I'm sorry I don't have a cameraman to zoom in on these close-up shots, but she's a budget operation here. Now you can see my tailplane is slightly more exciting in its outline, so I'll just use my scissors and cut it out. And again, I'm sorry about the lighting here. This, uh, the weather is rather odd today. Cloudy, then it's bright, then it's cloudy, then it's bright. So we just have to make do with what we've got. When I get, when I'm a YouTube millionaire and I have enough money to buy some real lights, you'll get much better videos. Until then, you're stuck with this. When was the last time you built a model with just scissors? There you go. A bit hard on the end there. You don't have to be too gentle with it. It's core flute. It's tough as old boots. And then I just cut off finished cutting this section off here and this section here and there's our tail plane we've got a bit more work to do on this because we've got to put some hinges in we've got to put hinges in on the wing too but basically there is our tail plane shape and which so now we have two wings and a tail plane didn't take long did it if I wasn't telling you what I was doing I'd have done this in a couple of minutes